Happy Wednesday, everyone. So the first question is from X Stephanie Emilini X. I hope I said that right. And she asks, can you do a video on how you take notes from your textbook? So I'm going to be using my investments textbook again because this is the only class really that focuses so much on the actual textbook rather than PowerPoint slides or anything like that. So I talked about this a little bit last week. Hopefully I can get a little bit more uh, in depth this week and answer your question. So this week we are on chapter 10, which is all about fixed income securities. So <clears throat> let me just get to the beginning. Okay. So each chapter has 30 to 40 pages, and the takeaway from those 30 to 40 pages should be about five main topics. And you'll be able to tell what that topic is because a lot of the textbooks will have different font sizes or different font colors for each of the topics that they feel are the most important. So you really have to get a feel for what your professor is looking for, and by week two or three you should really get a sense of the types of um, topics that they bring up in class, what they think is most important in the book, and <clears throat> even on your own though you can tell just by the names of some of the main topics. So let me show you what I mean. So for instance, this is the first paragraph which says why invest in bonds. Obviously the very first paragraph of any textbook and any chapter is going to be the most important because it will give you sort of a layout of either what the chapter is going to be about or what the most important thing about the chapter is. So another thing to keep in mind is to pay attention to italics and bolded words or phrases because obviously those means that those are really important. So in the first sentence it says bonds are liabilities and then I basically just um, highlighted. So you're going to want to get yourself one of these and yes it's different from last week I went home and found my old one so I had to go out and buy all new ones last time but anyway it's filled with, you know, all sorts of goodies, and as you can tell from my textbooks, I've been doing a lot of highlighting in orange. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but they say that if you highlight in orange, it helps you remember better. So, I don't know. I've been highlighting in orange. Seems to be working so far. Could be a mental thing. Not sure. But anyway, I've been highlighting a lot in orange. So, I've also been taking a lot of side notes, and... The purpose of this is two different things. Number one, it helps me remember, you know, while I'm studying, okay, this was the main topic in this paragraph. But also in class, for instance, my professor will just start picking random people's names out of the roster and just asking them questions. So rather than going through what I thought was important by what I highlighted, um, I try to just summarize in my own words what the paragraph is about. This way, if he asks me, okay, um, you know, what are interest, or how do interest rates and bonds, how are they related? And I put, you know, interest rates and bond price move in opposite directions. So that's what I highlighted in yellow. Um, but all the things that I think are the most highlighted or the most um, important in this paragraph are all highlighted in orange. So what I'll do then is, you know, I'll just, I'll read through and I'll pay attention to the major, the major titles. So if you can see here, this is in green. This, this um, heading is in green, whereas historical returns, for example, is in blue. So this indicates to me that putting bond market performance in perspective is what the book describes as a major topic. So I'll make sure to pay attention to that. But some of them, you know, won't really have that many, like some of the big paragraphs or sub of uh, some of the big um, concepts will not have sub-concepts. So I don't really pay too much attention to that. But if I keep going throughout the chapter, for instance here, major market segments. This is a big concept that's in the book, and it's in green as you can tell. And then all of these things in blue are all the subtopics within that big topic. So there's treasury bonds, there's agency bonds, there's municipal bonds. So and the chapter just keeps going. So obviously, you know, there's seven or eight blue subtopics to that really big topic. So obviously these pages are very, very, very highlighted and there's a lot of side notes all over the place. And then of course if you stumble upon a page that has a lot of formulas, I put 
these yellow tabs here. So that is basically how I go about doing that. So these are my notes, just page one of it. So, <coughs> so for instance, you know, the first paragraph I showed you guys, why invest in bonds? So here's all the stuff about bonds. And then I'll make sure to go through the major sub, uh, the major topics and put down the page number. Then, you know, when you go to class, the professor will then tell you what he thinks are the most important. And then you can sort of compare notes and see if you picked up on the big ones just like he did. So I put here, so chapter 10, these were the major takeaways. Coupon rate, par value, call feature, maturity, credit rating. And <coughs> like I said, I'll go back and make sure that I picked up on the same sort of thing. Another thing, too, is I'll always bring my books to class and I'll always refer back to my notes and what I highlighted in the chapter and what he hi what he highlights in class. So if let's say he said something was important in class but I didn't highlight it, I'll make sure to bring these guys and the book, highlight it, and then put a different color sticky note indicating that that's what the professor told me to do. So here, you know, we talked about par value. This is what he told us. Price of the bond always equal to 1000 and then I put page 369. <coughs> So as you can see here, if I flip to 369, it's highlighted in pink at the top. So that's pretty much how I do that. And, you know, like I'm saying, you'll get a feel for what the professor is looking for. And once you read the material in your, in your book, you'll start to get a feel for what are the major topics and what are the book's major topics, but they're not really that important. Um, so I'll just go through and highlight everything. And I only write down the really, really, really big things in my notebook. But for the most part, I like to just highlight, and I'm starting to get a liking of putting <coughs> side notes in pen on the uh, sides of the textbook. So if you have any other specific questions about that, feel free to send me an email. I'd be happy to answer them. But I hope that that answered your question. And um, like I said, if you have anything else that you'd like to add or <coughs> would like me to add, let me know. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Okay, so the second question is from A.E. Candria, and <coughs> who asked, can you make a new video of your daily weekly routine? So, for the most part, I like to be consistent in the way that I do daily weekly routines, but I have included new things to the way that I do things. So I'm going to refer you guys to my handy dandy notebook planner, and I'll show you guys sort of my dailies, and then how it sort of translates into my weekly routine. So, something that I started this year, as was mentioned in the previous week, was this five days a week little thing that I got from Target. So, this is my the whole process of my daily and weekly routine. I always get emails, either from the university or from people that want to have meetings with me, or activities are going around on campus. There's always so much to do when you're on campus. So, I'll make sure every time I get an email to refer back to my iCalendar. So I'll open up my email. I'll write down all the important things on my iCalendar, which is color-coded based on, you know, business-related things, speakers, activities, club events, RA-related stuff, that kind of thing. And so then my month is completed. Then at the beginning of each week, I'll pull out one of these pages. And starting with the dailies, I'll refer back to, okay, February 4th on a Monday, and I'll look at what it says on my iCalendar, and then try to write down in order of what my personal goals are for that day, as well as what needs to be done that day. So I went home this weekend, so this Monday doesn't really count, because I basically slept in, packed, and came back to campus. But today is Wednesday, so <clears throat> my daily routine on Wednesdays is something like this. Sleep in, homework, do miscellaneous things before class, because I don't have class until 5. I have a meeting with a professor at 3, so soon. I have class, then there's a speaker who's coming in. Um, I have my staff meeting. There's a cupcake war-related activity um, on my campus tonight at 10, so I'm taking my residence to that. And then I also have to write down relax sometimes in my video, or I mean in my papers, because I forget to do that sometimes, and then to make the video today. So that's sort of how my weekly is. But to answer your question, I don't really have a oh, daily, I mean. I don't really have a set daily routine because in college there's different classes and there's so much different gaps that it's really difficult to say okay this happens every Wednesday whereas in high school you know you wake up at 7:30, whatever it is school starts at 8 
you have a set day and then when you go home it's really whenever you pay attention to your personal things. For instance here, you know, on Mondays and Thursdays I have class 2 to 3.15 and then I have my internship. On Friday I have class 12.30 to 1.45 and then I'm done. Tuesday I have class 12.30 to 1.45 and then class 5 to 7.30 and then on Wednesdays I don't have class until 5 until 7.30. But just because I have free time doesn't mean that it's free because that's what I fill up with, club events, you know, RA stuff, business related things, meetings, the whole nine yards. So it gets really, really busy. Um, but what I really try to focus on is that I get my weekly goals done. So for instance, class like that needs to happen, internship that needs to happen. But then I put in, you know, personal goals that I would like to do for the daily. So for instance, tomorrow I would really like to read and I would like to do homework and go to the gym. So whatever free time I have, those are what I do in my free time, on top of probably other things. But in terms of weekly routines, I, I do understand, and you guys have to understand too, that you can't always do everything that you want in a day. So for instance, on a Tuesday, whatever this said, I couldn't do it. And on a Friday, I already know that I can't do that, so I scribble it out. So then, that's when I started doing something else, where at the bottom here where it says notes, these are things that I know need to get done before the end of the week. Doesn't necessarily mean that I need to get it done on a Tuesday, because obviously not all of them did. But I'll just put, you know, an arrow here which indicates before the week is over, when I do have extra free time that I didn't plan for, make sure that you get those things done. So that's when these sort of things come into play as well, where, you know, like this homework assignment was due today, this is due Friday, this is due next week, these are just random things, and that's, you know, more miscellaneous things that I need to get done before the end of the week. Everything will translate into my planner, which is color-coded. I'm going to go see Wicked on Saturday. I'm so excited. I've never gone. I went to go see the Rockettes last semester. It was great. Out of being, I go to New York how many times? Maybe three times a week. My family's, I mean, three times a year because my family lives there. I've never been like a tourist in New York, so I'm really excited. Uh, have any of you guys gone? Because if so, leave me comments because I want to know how it is. I heard it's amazing, but I'm excited. Anyway. So these are basically, you know, all the things in my daily and weekly routines that translate into my notebook, into my planner so that I know um, that I have them, I see them all the time, and it's just there. So that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, there's really no, like, that daily, weekly routine, but that's basically the process that I do every single week. And it's been working. I started doing it at the beginning of last semester, and these things are amazing. Go get them at Target. They're the best things ever. So, yeah. Thank you so much for your questions, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that that answered your question. If you have any other specifics, make sure to leave a comment or reach out to me, um, and I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, I also started a hashtag AskDonatella on my Twitter account, so that's going to be something that, let's say I do have a free gap of time, rather than it being you know, a video just answering questions. It's just going to be Q&A, and I'll answer maybe 10 to 15 different questions on Twitter and, um, you know, just throw answers at you guys. So ask away. I'm excited. Um, make sure that you hit subscribe to this channel because I'm uploading videos every single Wednesday, and I'll always be featuring whoever replies to these videos for next week's videos, um, and I'll try to fit in as many questions as I can. But like I said, for just random questions, Q&A, Maybe I'll do uploads on the weekend, um, but, you know, if not, like, send me Facebook messages, Twitter messages, whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped. Hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you next week. Bye.